Hello, everybody, and a warm welcome to this Vector virtual session. My name is Dirk Roseman, and I'm with Vector since more than 17 years. Today, I would like to show you some of the experiences we made in the automotive world over the past 10 years regarding the charging system, the charging technology, and the charging communication. Maybe some of this information and some of these experiences might also be valuable for you in the avionic world. So let's take a closer look into the experiences we made in the automotive sector on the charging of the batteries and the various systems uh, we have here. Uh, this is uh, the topic I want to talk to you about during this session. What it's about, it's about the charging technologies and also about uh, standardization efforts we have taken in the automotive world. And maybe some of these experiences are valuable or key indicators for you for your development in the avionic world. So if you look back how the automotive industry started, even 100 years ago, the Porsche Lomer was a very good product. Yeah, Even electric uh, driving was possible there, as you can see here. And it's decreased, and the combustion engines kicked in, and uh, then about in the 90s, mid-90s, uh, we started developing electric cars like this here with high-temperature batteries. And meanwhile, it's 2020, and what are the technologies we're talking about today? Okay, it's still uh, conductive charging over wires, like it's listed here. Uh, we're talking about inductive wireless charging um, uh, as shown here and also for commercial vehicles we have pantographs whether they are roof mounted or inverted so all problems solved probably not so it's still too complicated or what are uh, the topics here so future things charging possibilities we talk about are either robotic arms like shown here, or underbody devices, underbody connecting devices um, for automated uh, charging. But these are things um, still to come. So if we look at the current situation of the charging systems in the automotive world, we have various systems all over the planet. Now we have the Type 1 connector in North America. We have the CHAdeMO part in Japan. We have the CCS combined charging system in Europe and um, the GPT standard in China. Besides that, we have proprietary uh, things like uh, the Tesla charging system. But my focus today will be the combined charging system uh, as listed here, knowing that, for example, Japan and China are currently talking about a combined standard called uh, Chao Chi. But again, today, major focus should be the combined charging system as it's used in Europe. So what does combined charging system mean? Uh, combined, the name combined explains it. So it's one connector, one inlet that is able to handle the AC and the DC charging. So DC are the two pins down here, uh, DC plus and DC minus, and the upper part is for the AC uh, connection with the mains, neutral and physical earth here. And then we have additional, these two pins, the proximity pin and the control pilot pin. These are the connectors, the physical connectors um, we have here. So, but now what are the differences in the AC and the DC charging? So obviously we all know batteries are DC only. So somehow we have to have DC uh, voltage here to bring it to the battery. And uh, if we have an AC charging system somewhere, the power has to be converted to a DC and in the AC case, this is done on the onboard side in the vehicle. Yeah, So the connector delivers us AC. We have to convert it to DC to bring the power into the battery. On the other hand side, if you look at the DC use case, the infrastructure side, 
directly gives us the DC power for the battery. So how does, especially in the DC case, the infrastructure side know which voltage, which current to deliver? And this is why we need this communication pin where we are able to handle a digital communication from the vehicle to the infrastructure side. From the battery indicating over an onboard charger unit to the outlet or end, then we are the connector and the lines to the infrastructure side. What is the current voltage? What is the current current, so to say, uh, that the battery currently requires? And then it's the job of the infrastructure side to exactly um, deliver th these values and then the battery can be charged. So this means this is really a control loop over the uh, connector lines. So the set values are provided from the vehicle and the infrastructure side then has to deliver um, these values. So if you look at the differences, um, on one hand side, yeah, on AC, we are limited to what's available on one phase or two phase. Uh, in Germany, even three phase AC charging, what's possible here. With DC charging, um, at the moment, um, the combined charging system offers 150 and 350 kilowatt charges max, but is they currently working on a megawatt or above megawatt charging uh, systems with the same uh, technology. So this is possible with DC and with the combined charging system. If we look at the vehicle side, what impact uh, do we have here? If we look at the AC side, we have to carry this electronic device, the onboard charger to convert the power here uh, from AC to DC. So this is an additional device, this is additional weight we have to build in the car, which is not needed uh, in the DC case. Um, on the other hand side, we look at the infrastructure side and the costs also for the infrastructure side. Um, so at providing AC, fairly simple, at least not this complex as in the DC use case. Yeah, and therefore, um, less cost here on the AC side. If we look at the DC side, especially with all the power electronics we need here, uh, this is definitely more expensive for the infrastructure side. Let's take a closer look inside uh, the vehicle. What additional information and pins might be uh, required besides the actual power lines and the control pilot and the proximity pin during the charging process the connector is locked and this locking mechanism is initiated by the um, control unit inside the vehicle to lock um, the connector here and also to supervise the lock state additionally it might be required that we measure the temperature inside the connector um, with some additional uh, temperature sensors that are then also evaluated inside the control unit here. And as with uh, the cars you see today, you might have some indicator lights, uh, LEDs at the outlet really showing you, uh, for example, yellow, white or green for uh, active charging so that uh, the user knows, okay, the charging process is ongoing. And this ECU then gives all the information to the internal CAN network, um, mostly to the battery management system or vice versa, gets the information from the inside from the battery management system, for example, about uh, state of charge and um, the current uh, set values that are required for the battery to be charged. So how does this all work? Um, because we have now two players, we have the vehicle side and we have the infrastructure side. And um, typically this is not the same company providing these devices. And this means how can we ensure that both sides are really interoperable? 
And therefore, um, standardization efforts have been taken in order to specify this communication between the vehicle and the charging station. And um, this is uh, defined in the ISO 15.11.8. And this figure outlines how this documents of the 15.11.8 are built up. So um, first of all, for the use case definition, we have an dash one document that describes the general use cases um, and general information about the protocol itself. Secondly, we have the protocol uh, specification, the detailed technical specification. Um, as you see here, it's based on a TCP IP uh, protocol with some additional uh, layers above. And these are described in the dash two document. And the last part is the physical layer. Um, this is described in the dash three document, and uh, we have selected power line communication PLC as a physical layer here. With the blue boxes, you see that uh, we are working also in different editions of the standard. So currently the edition one uh, is uh, available, and we are now working on an edition two with additional use cases, for example, for um, inductive charging and also for reverse power flow or automatic connecting devices. These will then be listed in a new communication protocol specification called the Dash 20 document, especially for the wireless or inductive charging, we need a different physical layer because we don't have a physical, uh, physical connection anymore. Uh, we have selected Wi-Fi as the communication media here. That means we exchange only the physical layer, but the TCP IP protocol, for example, still remains the same. So this is all about the protocols here. And last, not least, we also need something for a test or a conformance test specification. And this is provided by the dash four and dash five document. So dash four for the protocol layer, dash five for the power line communication layer and the dash nine for the Wi-Fi layer. So this is how the standard is uh, built up here. So this means what we have achieved now we can build the vehicles based on this ISO standard, um, which is then directly over power line communicating with the charging station. The charging station itself might be on a bus depot, for example, with several uh, stations available. Um, therefore, also a back end might be required in order to control these charging stations to supervise them and maybe also implement some load management. Um, therefore, uh, different standards exist how the charging station can operate with a charging management system, for example, via OCPP, Open Charge Point Protocol. And this allows us now that the different parties are able to build their products for the vehicle side, for the charging station side and for the charging management. And they are all connected to each other with our standardized uh, protocols here. I've talked now about the 15.11.8, but looking at the combined charging system, there are also other standards involved. For the electrical part, we have the IEC 61.851 with its various documents here. Um, for the high level communication, we have the ISO 15.11.8. Uh, there's also a pre version with a DIN spec 71 to 1 available that's still used in some cars. And we have organizations like Charin or VDE in Germany, um, which are drivers and uh, promoters of this standard and which are providing additional guideline documents how parts of this um, specification shall be used in various products. So summarizing this information about the charging uh, technology and the experience we made in the automotive world, um, as you have seen, the charging system itself 
it's not only one single standard. You know, you have the connector, you have the power electronics part, you have the data communication. So this all uh, combines uh, the standard. Secondly, standard is never finished. We still continue to work on it. Uh, we feed back information from the field that we have gathered now where we can fill gaps in the specification and also come up with new use cases as we have seen for inductive charging or bidirectional power transfer. And last not least, I mean, that's probably also nothing real new to you, but the standardization takes its time. So we need some time to create the standards to align um, the, the understanding and the way we want to handle things inside an industry, but also cross industry if we talk uh, car manufacturers and infrastructure side. Um, secondly, I have explained um, the differences between the AC and the DC use case. Looking at uh, the pros and cons, I could imagine that, um, especially for the avionic side where weight is crucial, DC charging might be the right option to be selected. And last point here, um, standardization and interoperability is a crucial key factor to the success of such a system. So when creating and defining um, such a uh, system, please keep in mind how are you able to verify that both sides, infrastructure side and um, vehicle or uh, flight device are still interoperable. Thanks for joining my presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat right now. I'm more than happy to take them. If you have more detailed questions or want to have more detailed explanation, you could also send me an email on duke.crossman at vector.com. Thank you.